Has it flown? Okay. So, Somebody's got to come up here. Come on. We'll say that was about a bill. Come on. <laughs> no, no, they're going to be right, right here. here. You don't want to be right here in the middle where the action is. <laughs> <laughs> come on. You're not going to have to hear the whole time. That's why I'm not here. Hey, Carrie, so, do yeah. you care if I take some photos of them presenting? Uh, no, that's fine. Okay, yeah. Did you want to come to you and I come here? I think we're going to steal her, us, and our tech team. So <laughs> is that okay? No. You might want to talk to her boss. I'm not going to make that call. <laughs> I have to move to Indiana. Yeah. I would uh, work here during the summer, maybe. <laughs> What's the app last night? Did you say it was Vine? Yes. Uh, Vine's the one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That's the one where you just piece it together, right? Yeah, it's a six second video, so you can, you know, do a whole six seconds right away, or you can kind of stop and start it and it will piece it all together. It's pretty neat. I'm going to look that up later. Yeah, I remember just saying that last time. Yeah. Yeah. Would you like a last one? It's good time. I'm sure. It's good how the audio works. There is a Yeah. 
But I suppose they will ship it. You know, I know they're trying to ship it back. Right. But, but, in the bags, but in the past, it would be. That's right. So you have some overages in some stores. It's your news.
into what the DECA challenge was this year. I know many of you have participated and judged in the past, but uh, really the process is we submit um, the finish line challenge out to our DECA partnership. Um, and this year we had about 25 entries, um, and it was focused on finish lines on the channel strategy. So on the evaluation form, you'll see that there are six key points um, that we wanted um, the students to research and present upon. So I want to just start off with introducing um, the teams this year. These are the three finalists. So after we watched um, all of the videos, these are the top three teams that we brought to Indianapolis to present to everyone. So if I could have all teams up front, and then I'll introduce and you can just share your names, um, and then we'll get started here momentarily. So we've got um, Lakeville South um, High School from Minnesota. So go ahead and give your names. Yep, I'm Joel Burgess. I'm Brandon Salt. All right, we have uh, Harriman from Utah. Hey, Jensen. They were repeats because they were here last year. They were here last year, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the school was here last year. <laughs> <laughs> and then, last but certainly not least, Amador Valley from California. So, the team that we have going first is Harriman, correct? So, all right, let's go ahead and get started. Why don't we introduce all the people in here? Oh, okay. Okay, start down there. <laughs> I'm Carolyn. Um, I work in the Corporate and External Affairs Department at the National DECA headquarters. And this is my, I just started at DECA about three months ago. So this is my first experience with, with an event. So I'm excited to be here. How are you? Steve Schreibman. I oversee all marketing for Finish Line. Uh, Mike Brown, I work for Steve in marketing as well. Uh, you, you met us last night. Uh, Greg Wilder stores. Uh, Steve Schneider, I'm the chief operator. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I, I'm Vince Merrill. Uh, I, I teach at Harriman High School. I'm Randy Cameron, I'm the teacher. And I'm Laurie Andrews, I'm the teacher at Lexington. I'm Jenny Johnson, I teach at Lakeville South High School, Minnesota. I'm Janelle Scudder, I'm with that good staff. And I'm here doing all the social media stuff. <laughs> uh, my name is Doug Todd, I'm the Vice President of Tax. Al Boyce, what's on with customer service? Mike Smith, I have a law school. Bob Edwards at Distribution and Logistics. Uh, Jim Casper, Human Resources. Um, Compensation benefits, payroll, HRIS. It remains planning and allocation. Jeff Morrell, Vice President of Footwork. Voyagers. <coughs> we just walk them around and shake some hands. And <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to shake that? Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. 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 Good morning.
started today, we would just kind of like to thank you guys for giving us this opportunity. It's been amazing. It's been super cool. When we got off the plane, we saw the person holding our sign for finish line. We got in the limo. It was mine and her first time in a limo. And it, was a, it was a really cool experience. It's been awesome going to the finish line last night, picking out any pair of shoes that we wanted. Um, we handed out these books. In these books, we have all of our information, all of our graphs, all of the research that we conducted. We tried to give, put a lot of pictures in them, not fill it with words. So we, there's a lot of room for you guys to take notes, and we encourage you to do that. Um, before we start our presentation today, we'd just kind of like to introduce ourselves. So this is Nate, and he is a senior at our high school. He is a head lifeguard at our local rec center. He likes to consider himself a lifesaver. And he specializes in CPR. Um, he also spends a lot of time up on the mountains where we live snowboarding. So this is Sarah. Um, she is the choir president at our high school. Um, her and I kick rocks together. And about two weeks ago, she went to the Philippines and spent nine days teaching English, English in an orphanage. All right, and this is Nikki. She is the manager of our high school football team, which basically means she is a babysitter for about 100 high school boys and about 20 <laughs> coaches. She's also in charge of organizing all of the equipment. Um, her dad is from Puerto Rico, and her mom is actually from here in Indiana. They met in Honduras, and her boyfriend is actually living in Africa right now. So before we begin, we'd kind of like to do a little experiment. So if I can get everybody to stand up. So we just have some questions for you, um, and we would like you to remain standing if you have done the following. So the first one is, remain standing if you have ever used a rotary phone to call a friend. Remain standing if your music collection has ever consisted of eight track teams. <laughs> wow. Okay. So after you sit down, we'll have you stand back up. Um, if you have ever, please remain standing if you've ever written a letter to a boy or girl that has two boxes, one that says yes and one that says no. Um, the fourth one is, after 15 minutes of speaking on the phone, you realize that someone is on the other line, whether that be your mom, your dad, or your little brother. The fifth is, if you can remember what the internet dial-up sounded like, <laughs> The six. If you can explain the relationship between these two items. <laughs> Number seven, if you have ever used a hashtag, please remain standing. Number eight, if you have ever been the victim or the perpetrator of Facebook stalking. <laughs> Steven, stand up. <laughs> and the... The next one is if you have ever taken a selfie using your cell phone in a mirror. No. <laughs> okay, so honestly, we have been super nervous to come um, to you today because you're the expert, experts. Sorry, um, You know more about conversion rates, ROMI, logistics, and sneakers than we can even pretend to know. Um, however, we are the omnichannel generation. We've been Facebook stalked, 
We each sent over 500 texts in one day, multiple times. Um, we can tell you the exact dates and times that you watched the video that we posted because of YouTube analytics. We want you to see the omnichannel experience through our eyes. So before we get into our recommendations, um, we would like to explain to you, for those of you who didn't see our video, some of the research that we did um, over the past six months. The first thing that we did is we did an interview with store managers and employees. We gave the store managers and employees a short survey, and we also conducted a 30-minute interview with the store manager. The second thing we did is an internet website comparison, where we had 70 students from our high school compare the finished the website for the finish line, as well as the Foot Locker website, and compare, make comparisons between the two. The third was a survey on social and offline media that we distributed to four different high schools in our area, and it was completed by exactly 400 students. Um, that survey covered things such as social media, social media usage hours, and what brands they like, and what stores they shop at. Um, the next thing we did is a social media experiment where we ch chose 10 top retailers and we asked them three different questions on multiple social media sites and we waited for responses to see who would respond. Finally, we collected tons of secondary data um, from sources such as the Wall Street Journal, eConsultancy, AdAge, Adobe Digital, Pew, Nielsen, and Reuters. The first part of the Omni Channel that we would like to talk about today is the in-store experience. We feel that the in-store experience is the most important part of the Omni Channel, and connecting with that customer is extremely important. Um, if you wouldn't agree, just ask Manti Teo about getting to meet people actually in person, physically meeting them. Um, we were very excited when Mr. Marchetti was talking about the partnership, uh, finish, the finish line that started with Macy's. Um, we were reading last night about Macy's and how they're starting to open the millennial strategy, which is a strategy to target to 13 to 30 year olds, and it's a $65 billion industry. Um, most stores right now are consolidating, and you guys are branching out through a cost-effective way, which we think is really cool, and that way you can meet, you can interact with your finish line customers even more and having more touch points with those customers. Um, right now is more important than ever to start integrating technology and integrating new floor designs into your stores. We thought of putting iPads in the stores, having kind of the shoe tower idea where it's just a huge tower that you can see from outside the store, just a tower of shoes that would draw people into the store. Um, right now, just based on our research and based on how, we, how much we interact with the finish line employees, we don't feel that they have a firm understanding of the in-store experience. They most often confuse it with customer service. Okay, so um, about a month ago, we decided we wanted to see how other retailers um, approach the in-store experience. So we went to seven different stores and asked employees the question, what is your first thought when you see a customer come into the store? <coughs> when we went into the Apple store, the employee um, said, when I first see a customer, I want to make sure they're greeted and provide solutions. When we went into Zoomies, the employee said, when I see a customer, I want to see what I can get them. When we went into Dillard's, the employee there said, the most important thing I do here is make sales, because that's where you survive in a job like this. When we went into finish line, the employee that we talked to said, when I see a customer, I first think that I need to greet them. My goal is to sell shoes, sell anything. We think that this demonstrates that finish line employees see customers as a dollar sign. They're in it to make a sale. This reminds me of the kind of girlfriend who wants you to take her to dinner and buy her things, but she isn't actually interested in the rest of the relationship. <laughs> we were really impressed when we went into Vans. We walked into the store um, and told the employee who was working there that we were from a high school. We wanted to ask him some questions. He was very engaged and happy to help us. He said, the most important thing I do is create relationships. I specialize in the customer experience, and my goal is to connect the customer with the brand. When we walked out of the store, I turned to Nate and I said, wow, I want to buy a pair of Vans now, and I don't even wear Vans. OK, so these graphs are um, 
part of the survey that we conducted to 400 high school students. They answered the question, what is the top reason that you would go into an athletic apparel shoe store? Um, as you can see, 44% of both men and women enter the store because they have a specific need or a specific want. From this, we concluded that those customers are going into the store already prepared to spend money. But something that we also concluded is that Finish Line is a mall-based store. And because of this, your customers are going to walk through multiple shoe stores on their way to yours. And so this is why creating this premium in-store experience is so crucial. Because we want to make sure that they buy their shoes from the Finish Line. Um, something that we think can help with this is that the employees need to be knowledgeable, both in product, um, <coughs> product use, but also product style. I want that employee to tell me, wow, those shoes look great with this hoodie, or those shoes would look really cool with all of these other things, and that it would match things that I already own. <coughs> So up on the PowerPoint, we have a little part of this infographic on your page that we really like. Um, the, final, or the point that we want to make with this is that 51% of people believe that by 2020, the brick and mortar stores are mainly going to be showrooms. People are going to come to a brick and mortar store to test out the product, to kind of see how, see if they really like it, you know, physically touch it, and then they're going to go purchase it through a different way. They're going to go home and buy it on their tablet, or they're going to go home and buy it on their PC and have it shipped to their house. Um, Online is drastically changing how businesses are viewed, but the brick and mortar store will never go away. Um, so to finish up with, with um, in-store experience, we have three recommendations. The first would be to make sure that your employees understand what the in-store experience actually is and actually connect with that customer. So the second recommendation we have is make it a memorable experience. Use technology to um, make your in-stores more, more exciting and draw people in. The third recommendation um, is that we love the idea of Macy's and make sure that it's consistent and memorable throughout all the stores. Make sure that the Macy's stores don't feel different than the finish lines, than the separate finish line stores. And make sure that you have eye-catching displays such as that shoe tire that we talked about earlier. Um, you can't have the authentic relationship with people that you never see. Okay, so we wanted to talk a little bit about your website. About four months ago, um, your website, you upgraded it, um, and during that time was when we conducted our research. We had 70 kids do a web evaluation um, using that website. The things that they liked about the website were the big, bright pictures, that it was simple, that it was modern looking, and that it would be unique and not like other athletic store websites. Um, however, the biggest thing that they did not like was that it was slow, which made it hard to use. We recommend that you continue the change with the website and fix the bugs. It's important to remember that in 2010, 97% of people accessed the internet using a PC or laptop, and now that has dropped to only 46%. So, as she's saying, it's really important to be consistent across all of your channels. Um, so, the graph on page 7, um, that shows the multi-device path that customers take to get to their purchase. 65% of people start their, their purchase process on a smartphone. 61% of those 65 continue onto a PC or laptop, and then only 4% of those continue onto a tablet. Um, last night, Mr. Marchetti explained to us that the conversion rate of cell phone use is not good. Um, what we need to remember is that the initial contact of customers um, is, like it says here, 65% of them, the initial contact is the cell phone. And so that needs to be, the website on the cell phone it needs to match the website on the, um, the, inner, on the tablet as well as the PC. Um, it needs to be exciting and engaging, and it, it all needs to match. And, um, so one of the ways that the mobile website is inconsistent with the, with the tablet and the PC 
is that on the mobile website, I can click a shoe um, category. And I can keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and keep going forever um, until, until I find the shoe that I want. Whereas on the finish line website, I get to a page and I see all of these. I see 25 shoes on a page. But as you can see here, I have 12 pages until I can find the end of the shoes. So this little LOL so true is a hashtag that's used on Twitter. And it says, if it isn't on the first page of Google, it doesn't exist. Your users don't want to scroll through 12 different pages to find the <coughs> So we would recommend that both on the tablet and on the PC, you make it available that your users can scroll all the way down, or that you at least make it so that more icons can fit per page. <coughs> So from our survey of 400 high school students, we polled that 52% of men, when asked the question, what is your favorite athletic apparel or shoe store, 52% of men said Nike, and 56% of women said Nike. Um, this is obviously a problem because people are recognizing the brand of the shoe and they're not recognizing where they can get the shoe. Um, we have two stores within a half hour radius from our high school and from where these high schools were. And only one person out of all those um, high schools said Finish Line was their favorite store. We know that we're a little bit different in Utah because we only have two stores, but this is an opportunity for the Finish Line to embrace Nike, to embrace them, and get brand equity from them to build off their brand and make Finish Line a part of them. Okay. So we feel that offline media can be an effective way to develop a brand. However, it's important to know who you are, who your customers are, um, and to spend your money wisely. We're sure you're aware, but we wanted to remind you how one of your one of your biggest competition competitors, sorry, is spending their marketing dollars. <coughs> Son, man. Indeed, you wore those shoes yesterday. <laughs> My bad. You know, Falag is bringing you meat every day. Remember what happened to our race. I traded against Chris Humphrey's entourage. I don't see that here. I see a change, man. What do you see, Maurice? See a guy. Mm -hmm. A cool guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So it'll be interesting to see if this ultimately is an, is an effective strategy. Um, we feel it's risky because it uses specific players and specific teams as well as a specific sport. Um, we saw on Twitter that during the All-Star game, John Wall was at a finish line store um, signing autographs. And last night, Greg said that that specific store saw five times the amount of sales it normally does, and surrounding stores also saw above in sales. So we would guess that having an athlete come to a store is cheaper than sponsoring a three-point competition and is more impactful. So the infographic on the next page shows that, that the media universe is very diverse, making it hard to target customers. So our recommendations are that you determine who you are and shout it from the rooftops. Make sure everybody knows. Um, the second recommendation is to watch how you spend your money. It's like in high school, if you ask someone to a dance, you spend $400 on a dress, $20 to $30 on a corsage, $100 on dinner, and by the time you finally get to the dance, you realize that you don't even like the guy, and you would have rather spent $3 on a snack wrap and a McFlurry with your friends. <laughs> the next thing we would like to talk about is mobile technology. 80% of people that are shopping have their smartphone with them. 31% of those people pull out their smartphone when they're in the store to research a product. Also, consumers are increasing the time they spend with a mobile with a mobile app through businesses. Up, it's up 525%. Um, for the trap for the past six months, we've tried the we've tried to find the Finish Line app, and we could not find it at all. And then last night at dinner. Mr. Marchetti said that there was an app. So when we got back to our hotel room, we tried to find it again, and we searched for about 15 minutes and finally found it through Google. And we tried to scan in the QR codes to download the app, 
and on both Android and Apple, it said this item is not available in the U.S. markets. And there was no way that we could download that app. Um, on the next page, you'll see a graphic from the National Retail Federation. So the people, people that are in the ages of 18 to 24 and 25 to 34 all use their smartphones to plan and research products and compare prices, to plan to purchase products, plan to redeem coupons, and plan to look up retailer information. And less than 30% of both don't plan to, or do not plan to use research to make a purchase with any smartphone. People are using smartphones more and more to research products, especially in store. Okay. So as Nate talked about with the app, um, we couldn't find it. And when we did find the description of it, it talked about it being a store locator and a product catalog. Many of your competitors have apps along these same lines. And it doesn't provide the customer with a very high usage. Um, so we came up with a concept for an app um, that we'd like to explain. So when we found out that we were coming to Indianapolis to present to you, we decided that we wanted to build a prototype of this app. So we worked with the team at our high school, and um, well, we asked our teachers, but they didn't know how to do it. So. <laughs> <laughs> we worked with some high school kids who knew how to build our app, and um, we didn't have the capabilities to put it on the Apple Store, but we have it in HTML, HTML5 format. So I'm just going to walk you. Okay, so the concept for the app is this. Hold on a second. So, <laughs> so I would go into a store and I would purchase a pair of finish line shoes. These shoes would be equipped with a, remo a removable um, code card containing a QR code, such as the one that you see here. Upon scanning the QR code, the shoe that I've just purchased is then added into my virtual closet or the list of shoes that I purchased from Finish Line. There we go. Okay. So I can go back to my shoes and I can see all the shoes that I've purchased. Um, the customer, upon downloading the app, will be asked to create a username and a password and give us some of their information about their favorite sports teams and things that they like to do. Um, they can set goals, such as mileage, and they can also create new events. Um, the coolest thing about this app is the home page. Um, upon downloading the app and selecting your shoe, I click the Start button right here. And as you can see, here we are in Indianapolis, in your store. And this app would immediately begin tracking everywhere in the world that I'm wearing my finish line shoe. It would create a map of it, and as soon as I press stop, the map would save. Um, another cool feature that this app has is the ability to share it with your friends, as well as, okay. So I go into my friends page. Here I can link my, I can link my information to all the different social media networks. I can post on my Instagram or on my Twitter and brag about all the places that I'm wearing my cool finish line shoes. I can also create events with my friends. I can say, hey, we're all meeting here at the school to play basketball at 6 o'clock. Um, and if we can see who's coming to these events. Another cool thing is that through the GPS um, capabilities of the app, you can track when a customer is coming within a certain proximity of a finish line store and they can receive a notification. And this notification can say, hey, we have a deal on these shoes today. Or, hey, your shoes are almost home. You should stop by. Um, and so that is the concept of the app we created. And another benefit that it could have for Finish Line is this app provides a wonderful source of primary customer research. You can go in and see which customers are wearing which shoes in which predominant areas and be able to see different demographics based on that. So the final thing we want to talk to you about is social media. Americans are spending over 2 billion hours per month on various social media sites. Um, everybody's on social media, everybody's online. 
Um, I personally love Pinterest. I have a Facebook, but I hate Twitter. Um, so it's important because people have different opinions of different social media sites that you're on all platforms. So we conducted a social media experiment where we sent out three questions to 10 different retailers. Um, and what we wanted to get from this is who responded on what uh, platform of social media, when they responded, and um, how fast they responded. So as you can see, this is who responded to what question. Um, as you can see, the people that responded, they didn't respond on both things. People, we, meet, we need to make sure the finish line is seamless. We need to make sure that they're um, responding on both Twitter and Facebook because like Nikki said, she doesn't like Twitter, but she loves Pinterest and she loves Facebook. So if she asked a question on Twitter, then she wouldn't get it. And didn't, or if she asked a question on Facebook and didn't get a response, she would never know because she doesn't really check her Twitter that much. 72% um, of women and 62% of men want to want companies to respond quickly, and they don't care whether it's a good or bad comment. They want an honest answer to their questions they ask. Okay. Who remembers MySpace? <laughs> Keep your hand up if you still use MySpace. So MySpace hit its top use in the, between the years of 2005 and 2008. That's like three years. Social media moves very, very quickly. Um, you're constantly moving in and out of different platforms. 38% um, of people ages 18 to 29 plan on spending less time on Facebook this coming year, as you can see from this graph. Um, it's like going to a party. If there's less people at the party, I'm not going to want to go. It might still be a really cool party, but if my friends aren't there, I don't want to be there either. Um, so 61% of current Facebook users say that, they'll, say that they have, at one time or another in the past, they have voluntarily taken a break from using Facebook for a period of several weeks or more. You can't have your users not come in contact with Instagram that long. You have to be involved on all the social media platforms. And if you'll turn to the next page, this um, also illustrates this point. This was drawn from our survey of 400 high school students. You can see that um, men still prefer Facebook. 45% 45, 45 of them still prefer Facebook. But Twitter is at 39%, and it's growing really fast. Um, as for women, women actually prefer Twitter over Facebook already. Um, but one of the biggest things that we saw with women is that almost one fifth of them prefer Pinterest. That is their preferred social media site. So Nikki's going to talk to you about Pinterest. Okay, so Pinterest is pretty new, um, launched in 2010, um, and it is very popular among women, like Sarah said. So I'm just going to walk you through how Pinterest works really fast. This is my Pinterest, and um, this is my homepage. So as I can scroll, I can see anything that anyone I follow has pinned. So if I'm looking at my Pinterest, and I am seeing tons of different pins, the ones that are going to catch my attention are the ones that I'm interested in and the ones that are eye-catching. Um, so the majority of Finish Line's pins right now are one shoe against a white background, or one shirt against a white background, and that's not eye-catching, and it's not interesting. <coughs> so we suggest that Finish Line uses another site called Polyboard to put together outfits before you pin them. This um, also goes well with the new Macy's partnership, because now you have so many options with different clothes from Macy's that you can pair with your shoes and use that as a stuff point on Pinterest. Um, another thing that we um, noticed there is a Pinterest account called Fit, Strong, Healthy, Invincible. Um, it has not even 400 pins and over 3 million followers. Um, we believe that this is because their suggestions um, and their pins are, uh, contain health and workout suggestions <coughs> and make women feel empowered. Okay, so I am going to talk to you about Twitter. As I said earlier, I'm kind of a choir nerd. I like to hang out with all those like music geek people. But there are times where I go in and all they want to talk about is choir. And although I'm the president of choir, I don't want to talk about it all the time. Like, it gets exhausting. And so I need to talk about other things. 
Um, as we look through Finish Line's Twitter account, before Finish Line became a verified account, we noticed that they were really good at answering people's questions. There were just responses like that. Um, but as soon as they became a verified account and all we see is what Finish Line posts, it's all about shoes. Buy these shoes. <coughs> Find these shoes here. These shoes are coming out soon. Shoes are great and that's what you sell. But you need to relate shoes to real life and current events. Um, something that can illustrate this is during the Super Bowl, the blackout. Um, as you can see on page 21, um, Oreo and Tide and other retailers, or other products and other companies posted about the blackout. Tide said, we can't get your blackout, but we can get your stains out. Mm -hmm. And although it's just talking about some silly event, that's what people care about, and that's what they're tweeting about. Um, another suggestion that we have is that you allow regions to make a localized Twitter account. Because events like the blackout happen every day just in our communities. And so if something is happening in Salt Lake, if there's a race that's happening, a marathon, or um, the snow on the mountains is really good, you're going to want to talk about that in Salt Lake, but people here in Indianapolis aren't going to care. Um, it can be risky. You don't necessarily want people to be posting things on behalf of Finish Line that you don't approve of. But we feel that the risk is worth the reward as long as there are guidelines. Um, so an additional form of social media that we found is Foursquare. Um, it's a little bit small, but me and my friends, we love it. We love to check in in places. So how Foursquare works is when you go to a store, you check into that area, and you can earn um, awards, and you can earn little badges, and also you can try and become the mayor of that store, which is when you check in the most in the last 60 days. So it's pretty much like a game, but it's also a form of social media. It's really fun. Um, we have a screenshot of the Fashion Place small store of Finish Line, which is our local Finish Line, and it's kind of boring. There isn't really an icon for the picture, and the only the picture that's on there is the Google Maps of the location of where it's at. Um, we on this last infographic on the last page, there's only 10 million people that, lose, that use Foursquare right now, so there's a lot of room for improvement. There's a lot of room for growth. Um, we feel that also you can look at additional forms of social media, such as Snapchat, the Vine, and the new MySpace.com, because we feel that MySpace is kind of making fun of that. Um, so Finish Line's omni-channel strategy must be like the best friend that responds to your tweet at 3 a.m. You want them to be the same person, um, no matter who they're around. You want them to be consistent. Finish line needs to be someone who truly listens. Finish line needs to be the person that returns my text and likes my status as quickly. And they need to be someone that I can trust. So just in closing, um, we wanted to thank you all for the opportunity that we've had to do this project. Um, it was mentioned at the beginning that I managed my high school football team. Um, I've done that for three years, um, and it's something that took up a lot of my time. And so when, at, our, at the end of our last game this season, my senior year, um, it was kind of hard for me because I knew that something that was such a big part of my life took up so much time and something that I loved um, was over. And I kind of felt like I didn't know what I was going to do to fill that space. And that's how I feel with this project. It's been something that we've worked so hard on. and. Now it's it's over, and, <laughs> and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with all of that time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, going along with that, I learned more doing this project than I've learned. Granted, I'm a senior, and I have, like, easy classes, but, like, I've learned more doing this project than I probably have doing anything else in my high school career, because I've been able to have this real world, real world experience and to be able to learn so much about marketing and in-store experience and it's completely changed my outlook when I walk into the store. So I realized that this is my last big experience with DECA. I've done DECA since, actually last year was my first year, and I came on as an officer, and I absolutely loved it. I did a project last year, um, spent a lot of hard work on that, and made it to nationals. This is the last thing for me, pretty much. I mean, I have state, and I have my role play, but that's just not as big as a project like this. This has been a huge learning experience, and I've had so much fun doing it. Um, it's kind of sad to know that this is Literally, like the last thing, it hit me about 10 minutes into the presentation that, wow, this is the last thing that I'm doing. I will not do anything 
decorated for pretty much the rest of my life, unless I get a job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that is our presentation for you guys. What questions do you have for us? I've got one. Yeah. Uh, first of all, fantastic job. Really, really job. You can tell you did a lot of work. Um, my question has to do, you talked about showroom in there and where, where retail is going, what you're saying. Since you're in our demographic, as far as who our target customer is, I'd be curious your own opinions that if you go into a mall today and you had a store that had the product there that you couldn't take with you, you could try it on, get a good experience, etc., versus somewhere else, what, what's your feeling about having it shipped to you and receiving it two, three, four days later versus going down the hall and trying to find one that has that product? I think that that would be all right with us because I mean, the, with the whole concept of the showroom is that you'd be able to try out the shoe, and I think that that'd be a cool experience. If you have like a basketball court or like you know a little piece of running track that you could try that shoe, I would definitely go into a finish line to try on that shoe, and I would wait the four days rather than going to a Foot Locker or a Champs or something like that, where I don't yeah I get to try it on and get to see how it looks and feels. But if I'm buying a basketball shoe, I don't get to see how it feels on the hardwood. So I definitely wait the three or four days. <laughs> you want to try it out. Yeah, I definitely want to try it out. That would be a cool concept. What if you could go and, I mean, um, like your store, what if we could show you every shoe we really could if you want? They can't try them all on. Because we certainly could put them all in. But I can ship it to you. Too. Yeah. I, think that's, I think that's a great idea. Especially if your employees know enough that they can say, Finish line carries this shoe. We don't have it in store, but this shoe fits similar. This shoe feels similar. So if you like how this one looks, it's kind of similar to how it feels when you ship that one to you. And I think that's an awesome concept because even last night when I was at the finish line picking out my shoes, I have size 13 feet, so it's hard to find shoes, you know. And the, also one of the other people, they have size 13 feet. When we asked, he asked to see the Nike Air Max, and he came out and was like, "Oh, we don't have that in this color," but. We do have it in this color. So we have, yeah, he kind of had to compromise to get the Air Maxes, and I tried on the Nike Freeze. And honestly, with the Nike Free ones, I probably have to wear a size 14, which I'm pretty sure you guys don't even carry in store. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You do carry the size 14? Well, he said that they only have 13 in that store. But um, yeah, that would be awesome to be able to have that product shipped in the house. So, <coughs> I'll tell you, I got uh, three dozen shoes in a size 14. <laughs> I'd be happy. A question on your social media when you when you the app that you proposed and that you um, developed. Um, I thought that was a great idea. Um, sometimes we talk about internally at what point is you know uh, tracking and, and cus getting customer data too much. So from your opinion, because you are our target customer, I mean how much is too much when it comes to social media? You know if we're tracking you <coughs> via this app, I mean is that invasive? Is it is it just too much? Enough? I don't think that it is as long as you don't use it. I think that as long as the customer can go into the app and say, no, I don't want you, I don't want, they can even choose. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to receive notifications from finish line um, if I'm in proximity of their store. Or don't track where I wear my shoes. I just want to see the mileage. Mm -hmm. um, I think as long as you're not badgering the customer about where they are, then that can Steve. I think you guys did a really great job. Um, tell us more about why you're not on Twitter. Um, I actually we had this conversation yesterday in our hotel room because <laughs> so I was talking about how much I hate Twitter. Yeah. I think that I would hate Twitter a lot less um, if I went through and looked at the people that I follow and followed more um, businesses and athletes, football players. Um, rather than people that I actually know. Because the people that I know are tweeting about what they had for lunch or the cute thing that their boyfriend said to them, and I don't, I don't really care, <laughs> especially because I don't talk to a lot of them in person. So I have to give Twitter another try. Yeah, I think that's a great answer. A friend of mine follows a lot of people, and he said the same thing. It's just his feed is loaded with crap. Mm -hmm. You can't get any value. 
you mentioned MySpace might be coming back. Um, we've got once before. What, what are the indicators and why do you think that is? Well, basically, when we got on last night, it's not even the, when you get to the home page, it doesn't even say MySpace. It says the new MySpace. Mm -hmm. They're kind of trying to rebrand. And also, I've heard that people, like a lot of artists, are getting back on MySpace. So like John Mayer, you know, like a little bit unknown artists are on MySpace. So people that like those kind of artists and like to hear what they're talking about. And MySpace, you can upload music videos. People, that kind of people are like, getting into MySpace. You guys mentioned it when you were talking about Foursquare and then when you uh, recommended the app with the GPS tracking. Again, I'm, I'm a new parent, so I ask this, but does it bother you know where people when people know where you are at all times? Like, is that is that do you recognize that, or is it just you don't think about it? Um, I actually just barely got on Foursquare this weekend. So um, all the different airports we went to, I checked into. I've been checking in everywhere, getting my badges. It's cool, it's exciting, but I did have the thought, it is weird that people know where I am. I wonder if this is safe. Um, so I think it's important to have privacy settings. I went through my privacy settings on Foursquare and said, I don't want my locations to be public. I don't want these different things. And so I think if you can have privacy settings that control who can see where you are at all times, that's My team does a lot of work with the social media stuff. We've got people who are, it's a program called Spread Fast, and they look at all the different social media things. I mean, one funnel is pretty cool. And we had an instance a couple of weeks ago, maybe 10 days ago, where unfortunately a customer just went nuts on us because of a Jordan release. You know, they just went F bombs everywhere on, yeah, but, but it's okay because what happened was our person monitoring the, uh, the, the uh, Twitter site per page. Put in hashtag you mad bro, just like that, <laughs> kind of like trying to diffuse the situation. That day, he has twenty thousand followers because our finish line people who love finish line love the way he handled the person who lost their mind by just saying hashtag you mad bro. It was just so perfect. And this kid who works for his name, is, his name's Jaime. He has become like this this uh, Twitter <coughs> celebrity just because right, he, want, he wants to get t-shirts and all this kind of stuff and that bro. <laughs> you know? but, but it's so funny that it was, what's really what we're discovering is it's becoming almost like a, a banter, a conversational thing back and forth and it creates a relationship and we're able to really just blow up some of these relationships with our people and, and in a good way uh, and help them out. So that's when, when you said Twitter, I was a little surprised but I understand what you're saying because I have a Twitter myself and I totally get what you're saying. People are just, I just had a nice breakfast. Like, who cares, right? Yeah, exactly. But you should check that out, you mad bro. It's pretty cool. It's like, people have been crazy about it. You couldn't, it's a lifestyle. You couldn't find that. And even after we found it, so we Googled it, and I clicked on the link, which is, it's on the finishline.com website. So I knew that it was on the finishline.com website. I opened up finishline.com without the app. And I looked for probably about 20 minutes, could not find a link to the app on your website. And then even when we did it, yeah, when we scan in the QR code, it just pops up to the app. Just, just a point of clarity, we currently don't have an app um, until, you know, with all the issues of the Jet site, we are going to redo the app. And since our website kind of got a little messed up, we're focusing all of our efforts on the website. So we don't have an app, and I'm sorry. There was frustration in searching for it. I'm sure that happens all the time. But the app isn't out yet. Jeff, anything from here? I think the, the one question I have to get is the marketing pieces reference around the how much talk about all the good. You guys is it important to you for the celebrity um, endorsement? I, I know a lot of you, you referenced the, the Facebook and Twitters and all that, that, that you're looking for other people's opinion. How important is it for the celebrity in that situation versus that versus your friends? Well, I think, so if I have my DVR, um, Nikki talked about the, the statistic that 47% of all Americans have DVR. And I'm fast forwarding through my commercials because I don't want to watch them. But I see Chris Humphreys and all of those guys in a commercial, I'm going to stop it. I'm going to go back and be like, what is this? Um, so I think that that can be key, but for us personally, 
unless it's a celebrity that I care about, it's not really going to mean anything to me. And even then, it might just be a funny commercial, but it doesn't necessarily make me want to buy the locker shoes. So you get more clues to your friends who say, hey, I like this shoe versus mm -hmm. this other shoe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You talked about showroom and having been shipped to you, um, you know, through out of our store, being on. What do you consider, uh, and I want to kind of two ways, uh, free shipping versus you pay for shipping, and an acceptable time that you would expect that to get in front porch? I think that there's a lot of variables with that. So with free shipping, if I don't have to, like, get the, like, if it's just a product, if I'm just buying a pair of shoes to wear at school, you know, I don't really have anything important, I would choose free shipping, and I know that that's going to take longer. But say I forgot my dress shoes and for this presentation, I would have paid like twenty bucks at least to get those shipped overnight. You know, so I think that it, I think it depends on the situation basically. And but I think within a week, I would be happy with those shoes on my front porch. I just have one more question. I, I think I've done four of these now with you guys, and I ask the same question each group. What do you guys? What do you consider great customer service? What? what how do you define customer service? Um, it was like when we went into vans, like I was talking about, um, the employee in vans was very personal. Um, I feel like you go to a store and the relationship is very employee-customer. And it's almost like we forget that we're both people. Um, and so when we went into vans, um, he really was creating a relationship. Wanted to see us again, and you could tell, and it was genuine. And I think that's what good customer service is. Actually, cares whether you're going to make a sale or not. I also think that they can't fake it, or if they do fake it, that they have to fake it good. Because like you, you can tell when somebody's saying like, "Oh, those look sweet. Like you look super good in that." It's like, no, I don't. You know, <laughs> don't, don't, don't try and lie to me. Like I know that I don't. So I think that if you, you just kind of fake it, you have to have that personality of. I'm actually interested in why you're here in my store. Any other questions? It's interesting. It raises a, uh, just hearing you guys talk, it raises a, uh, we look at millennial as this wide age group, right? We base a lot of things we do on people that are already in the workforce, but they're in the millennial group. And here you are with some suggestions of a population of the millennial group that's coming, and really more of the influencer of the group, right? Kind of calls out to us the need to make sure that we capture your research, people like you, your research, to our strategy, because you're really a leading indicator of what's coming versus this group that's already segmented. <coughs> the so I think I'd also say we had this opportunity a few weeks ago to go to uh, I think Mike made reference of it at dinner last night, the uh, experience at Butler University with MBA students. And uh, you guys held your own today against the MBA students in your suggestions and the practicality of bringing those to fruition. It was a good job. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see.
All right. Page. 
Uh, it's near San Francisco, but it's a bit more of a suburban area. Hey, Lee. Yeah, I was wondering, would you be able to find one of the guys, uh, like uh, Mike Dodds or somebody to come help us out here at Hoosier? We have a gag presentation and we're trying to get the screens to work. We're having a hard time. Sure. He was, but then we got another presentation now, so they, they changed equipment. Yeah. Thanks, Luke. Yeah. 
No, no, no. It was just, I just didn't remember. I think it was the 10th or 14th, but they. Seven. 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 Do we still have a store in the, the mall of Pleasant Center Slam? Um, not in the Stonebridge Mall, but we have one in the
No, I just travel out there and see this world. Really? Yeah, I'm going to find out how funny it's so Maybe we will. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that a great mall? Yeah, Yeah, I'll go to the 
So because Finish Line does utilize the demand for software to store product, promotion, pricing, customer information in one cloud-based system, that enhanced accessibility allows Finish Line to create a more customized customer experience and a more localized one. Also, because we are drawing from one uh, database, it allows, finish, uh, it allows customers to send products from, uh, from, uh, from online to in-store or to their home or from mobile to in-store, and it really increases time efficiency for the consumer. And when I created the Finish Line Challenge video, um, I said that I used the Finish Five approach. The five ways that customers most engage with the company before deciding to purchase. The five ways were in-store, online, mobile, social, and offline. However, when I analyzed it during the video, it was um, I analyzed each of it independently from each other. However, now I realize that the true potential in the finish line omni channel strategy is in the integration of all these channels and the leading and how it leads the uh, consumer to the final product. So just as a runner needs a starting, a starting block to launch into their race, the right tools, right methodology is really critical in launching into a successful research project. So I utilized four main methods of research. First was an online survey to 217 students from both Amador Valley High School in California and Westview High School in Portland, Oregon. And this allowed me to get a better uh, view of data from both uh, from along the West Coast. And next I conducted a focus group and had a good mixture of people who had been to finish line, who hadn't, athletes and non-athletes. And next I interviewed a local finish line manager. And of course I used secondary research such as um, just the internet for finish line's annual report. And of course my own observations. But, <clears throat> but before we delve into finish line's omni-channel strategy, it's important to evaluate the competition. According to Yahoo Finance, three main competitors of finish line are Hibbit Sports, Foot Locker, and Sports Authority. Although these three um, competitors don't explicitly, explicitly state that they are developing their omni-channel, they still do have a very strong multi-channel approach. So all of their touch points for the finish five is, ri <clears throat> is rivaling that of finish lines or even exceeding. So some of the competitor strengths is one, Foot Locker utilizes the Lighthouse Visual Customer Service Intelligence. And <clears throat> this allows, I'm sorry. You're doing great. <laughs> sorry. Um, this allows sales manager, uh, store managers to track customer sales and learn about customer buying trends in store. And how it works is it has cameras around strategic locations in each store and allows, and it takes that data and back to the headquarters to analyze and learn from it and improve upon that data. And second, Pivot Sports and Sports Authority really emphasize localization in all of their omnichannel approach. So, um, for example, Sports Authority was ranked third in RSR Research's top localized companies, just after Macy's and JCPenney. And Pivot Sports takes pride in knowing all about the local um, shoe, apparel, and ball sizes of all sports teams and leagues in a one to five mile radius. So having that level of customer intelligence in the local area is really critical to driving in those customers in store. And um, this emphasis on localization was really corroborated when I interviewed the store manager in the Great Mall of Milk Beers, California. This particular location has its own has its own Facebook page, and it allows um, <coughs> local consumers to see new arrivals, new products that um, that particular location has in its store. 
So because it has its local uh, Facebook page, it allows consumers to see exactly what's in that particular store. So I believe that all the finish lines around the US should have local Facebook pages. The store manager also taught me about different outriggers and different sales techniques, as well as employee philosophies such as Go Team and DNA. And she also told me about the different technologies that Finish Line has started to use, like the eye stores and the tablets and the kiosks in select locations. So before I talked to the Finish, uh, the Finish Line store manager, I didn't know that Finish Line had started to implement these kiosks into the stores. However, now that I do know that, I have come up with new suggestions to upgrade that existing technology. And it's definitely more actionable and more cost efficient because it is updating an existing um, platform. And then after speaking to the store manager, I conducted an exit survey. However, it was kind of unsuccessful and I was really disappointed because people tended not to want to take my survey. <laughs> and so, but then I had like a light bulb no moment after that because I started to look around the store and there was such a diverse and multicultural background inside the store as well as in the regional mall. So to tap into that market of multiculturalism, Finish Line should update its online mobile kiosk platform to um, really tackle that multiculturalism. Because multiculturalism is a really huge portion of America, I believe multiculturalism should be a large part of Finish Line's omni-channel strategy as well. So by having languages that a lot of people use, widely used languages such as Spanish or Chinese, and having translations for online, social, uh, online mobile and kiosk platforms, it will definitely allow people uh, who don't understand English as well to be put in the driver's seat and still learn from the company and be allowed to learn about promotions, new arrivals, and um, join Winner's Circle and great promotions like that. So why I put so much emphasis on the in-store channel is because when I did this online survey, I found out that 84.4% by in-store. However, when browsing, it went down 55.4%. And the um, online browsing increased significantly. So the trend here in on the West Coast is that people would browse online and do a lot of comparison shopping. And then they would go in-store to buy the product because there's still an overwhelming need to try, feel the product, and get employee knowledge. So to improve that um, online channel, when a lot of people just go on to Google to search up different products that they like, because sometimes they don't know about Finish Line. So making sure that um, people know about Finish Line is really critical, especially in Google searches. That's where search engine optimization comes into play. This is a web, a search engine optimization is a web design concept that allows um, Finish Line to go, to be more at the top of the list on Google searches. So when I looked up Adidas shoes on Google, I found out that it only went adidas.com, footlocker.com, Zappos, Champ Sports, and Finish Line was here near the bottom. And of course, people only go to the top two or three searches. And by having finish line near the bottom, it is more difficult for people to just um, happen upon finish line while going while doing a Google search. I had a similar result with the Nike when I typed in Nike shoes. Finish line was again after Foot Locker, Champ Sports, Zappos.com. So um, Nike, as I saw in the annual report, was 64% of finish line's product mix. And because it's such a huge part of Finish Line's um, product, product lineup and it's a huge portion of sales, making sure that Finish Line is at the top for Nike shoes is really critical. So when people actually get to the site, 
We want to make sure that finish line continues its promise of customer service and premium customer service. So when I first went to the website, I saw that the most visible way to um, get customer service was just by phone. And it took a little bit of digging around to find this email field. So it, by making this email field more prevalent, it will definitely bring down clutter on the Facebook page. Because when I went to the Facebook page, there was so much negative comments and concern and <clears throat> asking about product information. By making this more prominent on the online website and possibly um, providing a link to it on, on the Facebook page, it will allow that clutter to be taken away from the public view. And also in the uh, left column, there was this Get Connected box. And it allowed people to type in their email or their um, cell phone number to get updates on finish line. However, it says just sign up for deals. And we need to make that into a more concrete benefit for the consumer. Because the consumers are always asking, what's in it for me? So by having a concrete benefit, such as 10% off your next purchase or $10 off, it will definitely drive customers um, it will lure customers in to put in their email or put in their um, phone number more willingly. Okay, the formatting is kind of weird, but for <laughs> Facebook, Finish Line has been doing really well in starting to incorporate current media and trends, such as the Mardi Gras promotion as well as the Meet the Team Now. However, as you can see here, the number of likes on each picture is relatively small for such a large caliber company. It's sub 200 likes for each picture. However, more recent posts, such as the Michael Jordan post, got around 2,000 likes. So Finish Line is well on its way to um, getting into more popular and trending events. However, Finish Line needs to do better on uh, providing the products in a more aesthetically appealing way. On the left here, we have finish line, a typical finish line post on shoes, a plain white background with just two shoes um, plainly shown. And it garnered only 1,171 likes. However, a footlocker rendition of the exact same shoes shows a completely different way of promoting the shoes in an aesthetically appealing way. So by utilizing creative photography techniques, we need to provide a more aesthetic appeal to a younger, because the younger generation wants something that's cool and hip and it's all about looks and appearance. So by using these kinds of creative photography techniques, Finish Line will definitely get a broader base of dedicated consumers on all of their social media websites. However, Finish Line is not the only option. For new social media, when I conducted the survey, there were Reddit and Tumblr were the two most popular. And Tumblr is the most viable option for Finish Line because it is a creative platform that really utilizes a lot of multimedia. And because it allows Finish Line to post videos, uh, audio, photos, it really allows Finish Line to expand into that multimedia trend that is coming in 2013. So, and also because it has a creative community, it allows it could it allows Finish Line to have promotions like um, design your own shoe with the Finish Line logo. So the Finish Line logo is more well known, especially on the West Coast. However, I believe that before Finish Line expands into new social media, it needs to improve its existing five social media channels. Because as we saw before, it is not getting as many likes as um, it should be on all different social media channels such as Google+, Plus, Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So some offline media that Finish Line can engage in um, is a bit different from the traditional offline media that we usually think about. So here in the browsing channel graph that I showed previously, there was only a very small segment that utilized mobile and magazines and catalogs. So we are moving away from that traditional form of um, 
offline media, just paper, and that, and moving away from it to a more technological centric way of offline media. So when asked which general media that they most use in, for high schoolers, text messaging was a really prominent way of offline media. Because text messaging is such, because text messaging is so prevalent and because people check it daily, within three seconds, it's a viable way of really making sure that the customers get the marketing and the promotion on time. Because with Facebook and other social media websites, it's the consumer's choice to go and look at the page. However, with text messaging, that there is such a high um, rate at which people look at text messaging, it's a really good way to target customers who don't have smartphones yet, or even people who do have smartphones. So one way we could do it is show promo code grand finale for 10% off purchase. And iHop had really good success with a mobile coupon um, promotion. They had a free short stack of pancakes if you signed up for their text list. And they had a 10% rate of people that came in and um, cashed in those coupons. So hopefully, Finish Line will um, emulate those results if they do implement more mobile strategies. When I spoke to the store manager, she said that because Finish Line did start on the East Coast and expanded to the West Coast, people in the West Coast don't really know about Finish Line. Especially when I asked around school, I, like, I said, hey, do you know about Finish Line? I'm doing this project on it. And even though there was a great mall that many people frequented, they did not know about Finish Line. So, the store manager suggested doing television advertising. However, because it is pretty costly, and it seems like Finish Line does not want to go in the television advertisement direction, another more wholesome way to do offline advertisement is by doing this very program. This will allow people, in, especially parents, to get to know Finish Line and see it as a reputable company. Also, Finish Line could expand its engagement in the Youth Foundation on the West Coast as well, and really upgrade Finish Line's uh, brand image on the West Coast as much as it does on the East Coast. Also, Finish Line could set up connections with local high schools, such as um, like Fleet Feet does with Amateur Valley High School. So Fleet Feet is a running specialty store in Pleasanton, and it gives amateur athletes 15% off. So uh, when I conducted the focus group, many athletes said that they purchased two types of shoes, one for daily use and one for function. And the daily use shoes were around $150 to $100. However, the shoes for function were anywhere from $175 to $200. Because Fleet Feet is offering a discount, they often went to Fleet Feet or other running specialty stores to buy those higher end products. So Finish Line is definitely losing business on those um, higher end products because it is not setting up connections with different local high schools. According to the annual report, Finish Line has recently acquired the running company. And it is moving more into that running specialty segment. And this is a $1 billion market, which Finish Line has a 200 to 250 million dollar earning potential. So by, in, by incorporating some of the um, aspects of the running company into the regular Finish Line stores, Finish Line will be able to attract more of those people that want shoes for function. So the other day when Ms. Sanders and I went to eat out for dinner, the waiter there said that he chose Finish Line over Foot Locker because it had a product uh, it had a diverse range of products, and because they offered shoes for running, not just for basketball. So by targeting those running customers and differentiating itself from the market, such as Foot Locker, Finish Line will definitely be able to get more of those high-end sales and um, increase its sales volume. 
If finish line implements this localization, multiculturalism, aesthetic appeal, and gearing more towards running, finish line will definitely be well on its way to reaching its goal of $339 or more per square foot in fiscal 2013. Thank you. Question for the multiculturalism. Um, something I was just familiar with from another company, but you said it very interestingly. So, outside of employees, outside of who works in our stores, um, what's your suggestion? I think you started to say it, but what's your suggestion on how we would use? We have handheld devices in our stores, for example. What's your suggestion on how we could connect with the multi diverse? customer base to try okay. and engage better because you're right I believe we have an opportunity what's your suggestion um well there could be like a tab on the bottom of the kiosk platform where it says English or Spanish or Chinese and they could just tap on each one and just change the exact platform just in a different language and another option would be using the NFC technology that people could just scan their phone on maybe like a QR code or the NFC and then an app would pop up on their phone where they could see the new arrivals and product information in different languages. What's your thought on Google Voice Translator? Um, I Is think it offensive? It, Some people say it's offensive to use. Um, Me meaning, that, meaning that it's good intended mm -hmm. but offensive in some ways. I mean, what's, what's your opinion on that? Um, in the store, we use Google you know, for voice translation. I think that maybe Google Translate or voice translation isn't as well developed as it could be to be used in finish line stores yet. So maybe if it's further developed, it'll be a better option to fix my Thank you. One of the things we're working on is communicating better with the customer through text messaging. I'm glad you mentioned that. So you're saying that your age group is open to you place an order and things are moving along and it's two days and you, you get that text from us and that would make you feel more confident that the order is coming. That it wouldn't because one of the things we're trying to figure out is if we send you that message and we text you, well then that maybe have you not make a phone call back to us saying, hey, where's my order? Or you know, send us an email. Would that text suffice? Yeah, I think it would if it had enough detail to show that the order was as long as it's not vague and has like it has all the evidence of product information and shoe size and everything out of the, it would be a very good um, stand in for a phone call. Because what we hear is we do a good job at the beginning <laughs> and a good job at the end, but in the middle, people are wondering what's going on with my order and then yeah. we get all this communication back on where's my order. So we want we want to text you. Yeah, I definitely okay. saw that on the Facebook page because a lot of people Oh, I ordered. I ordered it, but it's not coming. And then there was a lot of negative energy on the Facebook page. So having that on text would definitely help with that. Yeah. In, in a few of your uh, recommendations, you talked about sign up for the mm -hmm. We really don't do that. Oh, I see. Uh, we sell things at full price. Mm -hmm. um, what could we do uh, instead? I know that's the common thing that folks do. Yeah. Maybe during off season, if there was a product that isn't selling as well, and you could offer that as a discount, or maybe offer another product as like if you buy over this amount, then you get this product for free. If you don't want to cut down on the pricing, if there's a product that isn't selling as well. What's interesting is when we've done these, your age group talks a lot about value and coupon, but you know we do markdowns in our stores every single week. But we probably don't do a good enough job communicating those out to you that here this stuff's on sale. So it might not be a coupon, but we're putting it on sale. And we hear that I hear that a lot. That it's because I'm standing with Mike. That 
we don't really get into the whole discounting deal, but at the same time, we do markdowns all the time. Are we doing a good enough job letting you know that? Uh, for you personally, how how easy would it be, or would you like this alternative? That if you came into our store, you drove to the car in the mall, and we don't have the products, would you be willing to get it shipped to you for free, as opposed to then walking down the hall and trying to find some other retailer or store partner that that has that product in stock? How important is it that the product be? Um. I think it's really important, but if they already know like their shoe size and everything and they're ready to go, then that would be a really good option. But if they want to try it on, then it might not work as well. But it seems like online many people are already sure of their and are really um, keen on buying products when it first comes out and stuff. So I guess that would be it. Well, in that example, if you could come to our store and you could try on the shoe, but we only had one of each on the wall. Oh. So you couldn't take it with you? Yeah. What, what would you think about, okay, you can try it on, feel great, etc. cetera, you can ship it to you for free, but it might take them a few days, as opposed to going out to another store or walking down the hallway. Um, trying to figure out how important that is to you, take it with you, as opposed to knowing if you like the shoe, you like the size, you just get your shipped. Um, well, I feel like many customers will go down to other stores to see if it's there, and if it isn't, come back. So I guess it is a good fallback fall back plan to um, for customers to buy uh, buy the product. I guess. What if, what if we could show you, like say whatever the shoe is, Nike Free, mm -hmm. the average store, but offer us very spicy shoes. What if we could show you a dozen of them, or a whole bunch of them? Ah. Would that entice you? Yeah, that way because. Um, like that, the waiter said he was looking for like product diversity. So having that as differentiating itself from Paul Walker, who mostly offers basketball shoes, would be pretty attractive for the consumer. That's the essence, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Creating the best possible sort, sort of that you could show, not that and wouldn't that necessarily you, just yeah, be available. you've seen the best. And waiting until tomorrow to have it delivered, the option is better to have an assortment than it is to have two, two colors, right. and then they got to go shopping. Right. That's the essence of the show. Never so much. Mike, anything on you? Just going to ask in your search engine optimization area, we focus on the natural search results, and we were pretty far down the page. Yeah. Where does the paid search ranking, which usually is the Top of those results, which will show up infrequently. Do you guys perceive that differently as a as a consumer? Any extra value um, in natural search versus the paid search options? Oh, oh, you need the at like yeah, the ads advertising. Like the top. Well, those personally, I tend to skip those <laughs> because it's just like they're just paid to get to the top. But so I guess we do put more value on the natural search. But I can't speak for everyone in my age group. Is personally. <laughs> because a lot of the things at the paid ones is like eBay and Zappos.com, which we're not really familiar with. Any more questions? When, when you shop them all, who has the best service? The best service. Uh -huh. Forget the shoe store, the stores you like that service you well. That you enjoy going in those stores. I'd say Nordstrom is pretty really good. <laughs> and Finish Line is really good too. When I talk to the store manager. <laughs> Why are you you <laughs> no, but it really was because um, like the store manager was really approachable and she answered all my questions. But she did say that instead of lanyards, she would like uh, magnetic. Little name tag, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just gotta mention that in there. <laughs> <laughs> but that is pretty expensive. So. <laughs> All right, well, thank you.
additional competitor. So, I know you guys have been here for a little while, so thanks for your patience, I guess. And um, so, I know it's kind of a cool story if you want to hear how we kind of got to pick class. We actually won a rock, paper, scissors tournament. Uh, I don't know who this idea was, but uh, I was elected part of this team to uh, see who uh, was replacing, and I was you know, going back and forth between rock and scissors, but. I want to rock and it apparently worked out in the end. So, yeah. so I'm just going to introduce ourselves really quick. I'm Brandon Self. Uh, I, I'm a junior at Lakeville Self, uh, third year DECA member, and we are InterSlime's uh, consumer product now. So. Yep. I'm, uh, I'm Joel Varghese. I'm also a junior at Lakeville Self. This is also my third year in DECA, and I'm also a finish line on the channel customer. So, we'd like to start things out with a little video. <laughs> Research. We used a series of uh, surveys, focus groups, uh, employee interviews, uh, secret shop shoppers, and our own personal observations. Um, and we really wanted to find out your target mar market so we could correlate that to your omni-channel experience. Yeah. So what we really wanted to find out is what are the manners of what are the buying habits of your uh, uh, target market. So the first thing we figured out is they're very knowledgeable about the products and sneakers. They love them. Uh, they also are pretty brand driven. I found out about 58% of basketball shoes sold last year were Jordans. That just shows you the brand power that some of these companies have. But they're also visual consumers. About 25% of the neurons on our brain are directed to just uh, analyzing visuals and pictures and graphs and stuff like that. Also, we expect everything to be fast and instant. Uh, for instance, if I go on a website and it takes like 10 seconds to load, that's still too slow for me. I just exit out and go to a different website or do something else. But I think the really thing that kind of defines our generation is how we're now connected uh, and through social media. And speaking of social media, 97% of our survey are on at least three prominent social media sites. And as we know, Finish Line is on five prominent social media sites. They're on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, and Instagram. And that's really good, but there is still some room for improvement. 
Um, so when me and my friends were kind of analyzing through our focus groups and other things, finish lines on uh, social media strategy, we saw it being like a textbook strategy. We didn't see anything really huge or it kind of felt repetitive, a lot of the posts, and you know, just pictures of shoes. So we wanted to bring some other elements to that. So we, the first thing we suggest is a 70-30 model. And in the 70-30 model, 70% uh, of, of your posts on Facebook and Twitter will be about your product, and 30% will be about uh, pop culture, so like things around the community. And that kind of correlates to, so the people who follow you on your social media sites really like your product, so 70% needs to kind of have a strong correlation with that. But yet, you need to have the, that 30% to keep it kind of, have a variety and have substance to your posts. Another thing I was, you know, just thinking about when I was looking at social media, there was something missing. Um, I think why social media became so huge, popular over such a short span of time, is because the one thing humans are most interested in is other humans. So I think you need to add that human element to your social media. I kind of felt like it was too, it felt like I was following a company when I was following, you know, Twitter, I mean, uh, finish line for the last couple months. Um, so we kind of want, you guys, we can see that the people that are posting on your social media sites are creative people. They love sneakers, they're passionate about speakers. We want to see that, we want to see their personal stories because they're kind of, they represent the brand. I think you should really put them out there. And over the past couple of years, um, I'll wait. Over the past couple of years, um, we've come as a, the world in general has come really a far, a long way in terms of social media. Every day, uh, social media sites are made, and you as a company need to decide which one of those new social media sites you're going to use, and which ones you're going to try and avoid. And uh, YouTube, you guys have an official so, YouTube yeah. site. Uh, we'll let this play out. Don't put out your new media every day. Google will so that was your competitor's ad. Um, about 700 tweets a minute are YouTube videos. So that just tells you how YouTube expands to other social media networks too. And actually this ad, the Maurice ad, has a Twitter page that has about 50,000 followers on it now. It's called Help Maurice. Um, so both Finish Line and Champs use uh, uh, YouTube. Footlocker has about 50 million views. And that will just funnel them directly into their uh, website. So it would be really effective if Finish Line came up with a similar strategy uh, on YouTube. And the next big trend is these things called GIF. And this one, this is one right here. It's basically a short video where you kind of show what, what's going on in your life. So this one's of a shoe. Oh, I'll replay that for you really quick. Yeah, you. Like, yeah, it's, this is like actually a buying. So it's like a short video clip. And it's the next big trend. Uh, there are uh, <laughs> uh, there are sites with uh, Vine and Cinemagram. They're apps, so you can take video like five to eight seconds long, and you can post it on your favorite social media sites like Facebook and Twitter. And that everyone can see that little short video about your product. Yeah, Vine was actually created by Twitter, so it integrates really well with it. Um, another really cool, interesting social media set we found is Juanilo. This is like just coming out of the woodworks. It's just getting popularity. It's, I like to call it a mix between Pinterest and Twitter. So it's about 95% female. It's kind of, that's why it's similar to Pinterest. And the thing is they can share and save things, which their friends would see. And they add hashtags, and they are trending products. So this is an example of a trending product. This is a Nike Free uh, 2 EXT running shoe that you guys actually are selling on your website currently. So this one is actually being sold by Nordstrom through Juan Nilo. It has about 35,000 shares. And the buy button, if you can see, is right there. So just imagine how much of those shares went directly to the, would go to Nordstrom's website. So. Next, we're going to kind of show you the, the social media sites to avoid. Uh, and the first one's Foursquare. Foursquare has a nice like, check-in ability, and you can kind of use coupons with it. But right now, it's becoming obsolete because the prominent uh, social media sites like Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus all have that, are starting to have that feature on their websites. So now, uh, and also you're, uh, you're already built an infrastructure on those uh, social media sites. So we suggest that you use the check-in feature there instead of Google. Um, so another kind of interesting social media site that's coming up is Tumblr. 
It's kind of like a photo and video kind of album. So we don't think this is right for finish line because the content on there isn't really brand specific at all. The brands that are on there are either luxury, like handbags, like Coach, or like J. Cruz on there, or it's kind of luxury car brands. None of your competitors are on there. There's really no comparable kind of retail brands on there. Um, so that's why we don't suggest to use a site. To kind of end on social media, you really see social media becoming more and more expensive for companies to produce. Because we really see, you see the IPOs of Facebook, and Twitter will go public soon. So they need a way to uh, make money and give dividends to their investors. So they're really going to charge. So your social media budgets will probably increase. And you'll probably get more exposure to social media in the future. So just a little heads up on that. And the next thing is offline media. And we see offline media still having a prominent, large role in your online channel experience. Your catalog, frankly, is really nice. Um, your subscribers really love it, and um, yeah. And also, we like your strategic uh, partnership with Sports Illustrated. Uh, so you guys put in your ads there, you put in like your product there, and your target market actually loves to read um, Sports Illustrated. We and Joel both have uh, subscriptions there. So they're kind of seeing your products, they're seeing your ads on that uh, magazine, and that really helps. Even your, uh, you guys had, I think, two special editions, uh, Enduring Sportsman, and uh, what was the other one? I can't, I'm sorry, I forgot the other one, but you guys had special editions. If you bought a shoe, I actually got one that was really interesting that really drew me to uh, the buying shoes at the finish line. So another thing that we saw is your competitors, their offline media strategy is focused on the TV ads. They then post on YouTube. That's why they kind of get that both, that kind of popularity on YouTube too. But we really see the trend in offline media moving more online in general. So the first thing we're going to talk about is radio stations. My generation doesn't listen to traditional radio stations. Uh, we listen to Pandora and Spotify online. We can choose the music that we want, and it's totally different. Another thing that we see is instead of sitting down watching TV, we watch it online whenever we want. And these are really interesting for marketers on websites like Hulu, YouTube, and Netflix. Because you guys, have you're, they're on the internet already. So you can create interactive content and get them directly to your website. Another thing we suggest is to bring your printed materials online. So with Slide Magazine by Champs, they have that magazine, they sell it, they produce it, but they also have an online app for people to download so they can view the magazine that way. That kind of brings out more, more views, more people view it, and um, it will really help uh, promote your magazine. So Actually, um, there's kind of a DECA connection here. Uh, DECA has a monthly magazine called DECA Direct. And I'm going to be honest, I've been a DECA member for three years. Read one magazine, and then this starting this year, they started putting posts online. They started a Deca Direct website, and I actually was engaging with it a lot more. <coughs> actually, learned a lot from using that website. So we kind of see that we kind of see those websites kind of getting more popularity. So just moving to the most important piece, I think of Finish Line's offline media strategy is Winner Circle, and I, I personally did the analyzing for Winner Circle. And the first thing I thought of is. Why don't I have one of these? I love the benefits that it had, but I didn't think that they were communicated real well, and they weren't really advertised real well. So I didn't know what they were. And I personally buy five to six pairs of shoes a year, and I really like the benefits of uh, Winter Circle, but I feel like the benefits aren't really out there. They're only really in store. So to kind of bring it online, through your mobile, through your internet, that sort of thing to kind of help uh, advertise the benefit. And the thing is, we don't feel like now Winter Circle is really Omnichannel compatible. We really saw it was pretty lackluster when we looked at the app, uh, the mobile versions, and the online versions. We felt like you can expand that more. And also, it should be integrated better into social media. Um, so, this does two things. Uh, one, uh, you can analyze their posts. So, you can see what they like, who they follow. And it'll create a personal profile of a customer. This will make it easier to market to them. And see what their previous posts, uh, what they post, what they like. So if you see them following like ten basketball players, you clearly know they're a basketball fan. So then you'd suggest, you know, Jordans or LeBron tens or something like that. So we feel like that would be kind of creating that profile and using that across all uh, social media, uh, all platforms, all channels. That would really kind of with that, the sneakerologists can actually view from their Veriphone system your. 
profile. So they can see your interests, they can see what you like, they can see your previous purchases, your wish list, that sort of thing. So they know what you want, they can kind of suggest what you want, and that really helps. So what really another I mean you uh, another really huge trend is going to mobile. About ninety percent of the people that we surveyed said they had a smartphone. Ninety percent. And I know um, you guys were t I was looking at some of your research and I found out that your mobile uh, website is actually really, really popular compared to any other brand. Um, so your mobile access through your what am I trying to say? <laughs> Sorry. Um, your mobile uh, views are a lot larger than, they're probably double the amount of another brand of any other retail store. So that kind of shows that importance. Um, and we kind of suggest to create an app like uh, Big Sporting Goods. They have a really good app because it has featured products to show what's kind of trending, the shoes that are trending. And it has the reward system built in so they can kind of use points, they can use the reward system on their mobile phone. It also has things like store locator, product search, and a barcode scanner for people to get information on the products <laughs> on their phone. We other see some other trends in mobile. So the first thing that we saw was the issue of not texting but using push notifications. Um, when, when I ever get a text from like a brand or a company, I never open it up. But you get notification, you always see notifications. And the other thing is they kind of see the logo of the company when you open up a notification. So I just go back and into their mind and see that branding. And you can also go into the app and set it up. So for instance, I would get a notification when the new Jordan Retros would come out. And another cool technology, I don't know if you guys have seen the Samsung Galaxy S3, they have, uh, it has near-field communication technology. So that's a thing where you can touch phones, and you can send tra uh, transfer data. So that's another interesting trend we see and with that is mobile wallets. So we kind of see things like Google Wallet, where you pay with your smartphone. Those things are really picking up. And you know, Brandon talked about a little bit earlier, but uh, one of the things, one of the cool ideas we had is whenever you walk into a finish line store and you're a Winter Circle member, you would, the GPS on your phone would recognize that. And it would send you a notification saying, would you like to check in for deals and discounts? So you would do that, and it would send that to your social media platform saying, hey, I'm at finish line. And then also, the a sales associate with the Verifone system would also see that you checked in the store. Then they would pull up your personal profile and then see what you like, what your interests are, and suggest you a shoe to better market to you better. The next thing is internet. And uh, in our survey, 20% bought their shoes last online. And that kind of shows two important things. It shows that internet is still important in terms of sales, but it shows that internet is really browsing. People want to see the shoes before they go buy them in store, and they want that convenience to go look it up, and it's right there in front of them within like 10 seconds. So Finish Line had a lot of changes this, actually the past couple months with their uh, e-commerce platform. So first, there was a move to a demandware platform. And I, when I first opened the website, I liked the, you know, the colors and the look of it. But then when I actually started using the website, I saw the flaws and the functionality and really lacked the custom service and the loading. And I was frustrated a couple times because the website kept crashing on me, personally, when I was browsing it. Um, so then the, you guys moved to, back to your legacy website. But we still feel like you still need, your competition does a better job with their websites. It's not, they're more updated than yours is now. So I heard that you guys are still looking forward to uh, building a new website. But we just want to give some suggestions for that. And with the legacy site back, uh, we know that you lost 3 million in sales in that period with that failure of the demand for system. But, and then you abandon demand wear altogether. But like Joel said, it kind of feels outdated and we still feel the need for you guys to go out and kind of get that new website so that it's updated, so that it's new, and so that it's current. Uh, one thing we suggest is customer service live chat. We feel like that would really help bring, um, kind of give a new medium because uh, my generation doesn't call. You know, we don't call people, we text people, we do this. You know, you see a lot of your complaints funnel through social media. So if you have this customer service live chat, a lot of those complaints will be uh, focused towards this, these uh, customer service representatives. And another thing is to add a release calendar to show when the, the shoes that are most, uh, like the people who want the shoes, they can go online and they can look at the release calendar and see when that shoe comes out so they can go get it as fast as they can. Uh, and that's really good for the like diehard sneaker. Another thing uh, we really see a trend in is Kind of personalization. 
That's what this new 21st century marketing is. All about personalization. So buy their Winter Circle account. Kind of suggest shoes and model shoes differently. So you, the product display. So for me, I'm more of a runner, right? So you would show me running displays. When Brandon logs in, he would see basketball shoes. So kind of direct, kind of showing them what they want. That's what's important. And another thing is uh, Amazon Prime. When people order things online, they want it to come fast. And that's why Amazon is so successful right now. They're able, people can use Amazon Prime and they can buy a product and they can get it within one, two, three days really fast and that's what they want now. It wasn't like the olden days where you, you don't really care when it comes. Right now people want the product and they want it now. Yeah, so, um, so me personally, um, I bought uh, my phone. It was the same exact price at Best Buy but Amazon. But I got two days earlier from Amazon. So I just went to that because I want that. I want that phone. I want to use it. You know, when people buy these shoes, they really want them. You know, they want to get them now. They want to wear them. They want to show their friends. So we need to get, speed up that process, get them their shoes quicker. Um, we still feel like the biggest and the most and the central of the Omni channel should be the in-store experience. So this is still the most important channel. So a lot of things we like is we like the sneakerologists. We like the customer service they represented uh, for the things they implemented from the Go Team philosophy. Uh, we also are really interested and kind of intrigued by the Verifone system. Uh, we feel like it's used well right now, but it can be expanded in the future. Uh, also, the Macy's deal. We're really ecstatic about the Macy's deal. We feel like it opens you up to a new market of kind of the department store lady and uh, also children's. Because children's has, I think in your last quarter you reported, about 20% increase uh, quarterly for children. So that's a huge market. And you're talking about expanding that in Macy's, one of the best brands in the world. And also there's PayPal in store, and uh, I've seen this virtually in uh, Foot Locker store. Where they can just, they don't need to bring in their wallet, they don't need to bring in any cash, they can just log into their PayPal and pay that way. And that's really useful for the people who maybe travel light or something like that. So we, ha we do have some more suggestions for your store though. So just some things that improve the experience. Uh, uh, the first thing is uh, to add more technology, as we saw earlier today in your like research store. You had tablets in it, you had that big uh, tablet in it. But we want to see more TV screens. We, we didn't see any TV screens. And TV, what it brings is it can advertise finish line, it can advertise products in store, and it can also kind of add that entertainment purpose for people to come in. The other thing is, I said it before, 90% of your customers have smartphones in their pocket. So why wouldn't you leverage that? So leveraging smartphones in the store by making them interact, you know, using NFC, using barcode scanners, kind of get them using their smartphones too. Because they'll, they'll, if you give them the chance, they'll use them. Um, another thing is, what, and we even found this at the store we visited yesterday. Um, when we got our shoes, when we requested a shoe, um, the customer service representative took about five or six minutes to come back and get the shoe. And then when they got the shoe back, what happened was it wasn't the right size or it wasn't the right color. So one thing we have is expanding Verifone. So what would happen with Verifone is it would have a catalog of what shoes are in the back room. Okay? So, that, so then when you, search, when you ask for a shoe, uh, the sales representative can check on their phone, what do we have in the back room? What can I suggest for them? And then another thing is, um, and then what they would do is they'd send a signal to the back room of which shoes they would order. Because what happens is, those are five minutes are crucial, okay? Because I, when I during those five minutes, I wasn't engaged in the store yesterday, so I was kind of like sitting there not doing anything. I lost my interest in the shoes, honestly. So keeping them engaged with the customer service uh, representative there, and so sitting in the center of the back room, and then you kind of so what happened was Brandon was waiting for like five minutes, mm -hmm. right, to get his shoe back, and he was disappointed he couldn't get the right size. You can see it, and then you can like say, "Oh, we don't have that shoe, but we can ship it directly to the store." Another thing with that is, uh, when you have Winter Circle, you, do, you tell it to them at the counter, right? So when I buy a shoe and I'm at the counter, I want to go home. I want to leave, you know. So kind of engaging them and telling them different things while the sale process is going on will keep them more engaged and keep them listening. Another thing is. Uh, kind of giving them more interactive content in the store. Mike was talking uh, yesterday at dinner about how he uh, beat Hope Solo in the uh, little <laughs> Nike Plus, uh, what was it, like a little, would you run? Fort Fire, yeah. So we would think that if you actually put that in all your stores, 
kind of show, let people do that, have a competition, uh, integrate it with social media. That would be awesome. Have a leaderboard. Uh, that would really keep people engaged and bring people in your store. So, but we really see the trend is next is in cross-channel integration. And it's kind of good to have all of your channels integrated together. And people, before they make a purchase, they'll gently use three to four channels before they make that purchase. And all the channels kind of evolved separately, so they all kind of went in different directions. And we kind of need to bring them back to that central region so that they're all kind of integrated. Yeah, so customers expect seamless transitions across all the different channels. So this also this is also great for the customer service, right? But I think the bigger thing is with analytics, with big data. Um, so you guys can analyze. So I know this year there was a trend moving from running shoes towards more basketball shoes. If you have that data, if you have those analytics, it will also help your customer service, help you uh, produce orders that are more um, relevant to your customer. Also, uh, yesterday, we went to the store too. This is another experience. Uh, Nate uh, from Utah and Brandon were size 13. But size 13s sell really quick. That's what the uh, sneakerologist told us. So you can even look with these analytics and this big data uh, to see, oh, size 15, there are more people wearing that size. We need to order more of those from Nike and Adidas. So I think we're going to go through a video of your average friend like customer. This is Joe. And Joe, he likes basketball, he likes football. And he really keeps up with the trends with shoes, so he likes the shoes. And he, he's really like an athletic guy, and that's kind of what he likes. Yeah, he's a self-described sneakerhead. And there's one more thing Joe likes to do. He likes to dance. <laughs> so this is Joe's kind of finish line experience. So first, he starts off. And mobile. So mobile, you don't have that direct buying thing, but you're browsing. Also, internet's more of a browsing channel, even though you get purchased on there. Um, and he's looking at Facebook and Twitter, and he liked those pages. Uh, from there, he signed up for Winter Circle and is now a member. And then he was browsing through a Sports Illustrated magazine. He saw a finish line ad, and he's like, you know what? I need new shoes. I need to go in the store. So when Joe walked in the store, he checked in. And the customer service representative, Drew, Saw him check in, and he saw that the last two years he bought uh, Air Max 2011 and 2012s. So he suggested the new 2013 Air Maxes. So Drew got a shoe really quick. Wow, that was fast. And uh, now Joe's trying them on. And he likes them, and he decides to buy them. And he's really enamored with the customer service, and he was really interacted with during the whole experience. Joe is really, really happy with his experience at finish line. He just wants to dance. <laughs> uh, so uh, we made frozen self there. But, uh, so what we really are at the end with is uh, we see our whole presentation, all our suggestions, our ideas, and input from your target market, from sneakerheads, from people that love your brand, and where we see the future going because we our generation is evolving so quickly and so fast that you as a company it's actually hard to keep up with us. I think you guys would attest to that. So we really thank you for you know bringing us here and mm -hmm. kind of listening to us because it's you know it's great for you, it's great for us. So it's a great uh, experience. yeah, thank you. Yeah. And uh, we don't like to open up for.